Welcome everyone to another episode of Space This Week, your Monday rundown of all things Starship development, rocket launches from the past week, and all other stories on spaceflight from the past seven days. So much ground to cover once again, from the doom of Booster 7, near guarantee of further FAA delays, a successful Falcon flight, and some amazing new footage from Mars. All this and more, so let's get right into things. There have been some pretty major happenings in the world of Starship and Starbase this past week. One of the more iconic aspects of Starbase is the series of tents that SpaceX used to store various components such as tank segments and Raptor engines. But long term, the plan is to build a proper building rather than continuing with the tents. This is what SpaceX will be doing for their Cape Canaveral site, but they've finally begun taking the steps to construct the Star Factory building at Boca Chica. Starship Gazer shared this photo with us of the first vertical steel columns going up last Monday, and if the build pace of the other structures around Starbase is anything to go by, then we should see continued progress on this building happen fairly quickly. Here's another angle from Nick Anciuini. And just a few days later, this is what it looks like now. It's a good reminder that SpaceX are still confident with the continued operations in Boca Chica. There's been a lot of negativity around the Texas site due to the continued FAA delays and speculation that everything will be moved to Florida, but I'd be extremely surprised if this were the case. The FAA delay does suck, but it will be done eventually, and SpaceX's current orbital vehicle, most likely Booster 8, for reasons we'll cover in a second, paired with possibly Ship 24, won't be ready to fly for at least a couple of months or so, I would say. Moving along, on Monday, SpaceX continued the stacking of Booster 8, and we got some glimpses through the door of the high bay, but wait, we'll get a better view in a second. That's because Booster 7 was then moved away from the launch area and back down to the high bay, and during this move, SpaceX rolled Booster 8 out into the open, giving us our first proper glimpse of the partially completed booster. As you can see, this is just the top section. Here it is next to the mid bay with Booster 7 by the high bay. Thank you once again to Starship Gazer for the awesome photos. So, Booster 7. This was believed to be the booster to make the first Starship orbital flight, but check out this leaked photo, which shows some pretty severe damage inside the booster. To recap quickly, so far Booster 7 has undergone pressure and cryogenic proof testing and all seemed to be going well for this booster to be mated with Ship 24 to make the first orbital flight test. But this picture here appears to show heavy damage to the downcomer inside the booster. This tube is supposed to be a perfect cylinder. Its function is to transfer methane from the upper methane tank down through the liquid oxygen tank to the engines. But it would seem that at some point during the tests, it became squished into this jagged mess seen in the leaked photo. Photo. The most likely cause for this was that the downcomer underwent a vacuum and collapsed, which is a potential process issue with fluid transfer. Here's a controlled demonstration of a tank trailer vacuum collapse performed by Waybash National. You can see that the result of the vacuum implosion leaves the tank looking very similar to the downcomer in this picture. Now it's not clear who leaked this image, though it's fairly safe to say it was a SpaceX employee, but it has been making the rounds quite rapidly through Discord, Reddit and Twitter. So where does this leave us for the orbital flight test? Well, option A would be for SpaceX to simply excise the wound, remove the destroyed downcomer and weld in a new one. After all, Elon himself stated that one of the beauties of working with steel is the ease of repairing damage, which is of course a big benefit if you need to make field repairs on Mars. Option B, and in my opinion the more likely route that SpaceX will take, will be to scrap Booster 7 and move on to completing Booster 8, implementing any changes needed after the lessons learned from what happened here, and then proceeding with tests and hopefully a launch. Or maybe even SpaceX will go with Booster 9, which has had some of its components spotted at the Starbase site now. Or maybe another booster much further down the line. The reason for my sudden pessimism here is that it's looking increasingly likely that the FAA is going to delay their review deadline again. The current deadline is at the end of the month, which is now less than one week away. However, we've still heard nothing from either SpaceX nor the FAA and many news sources such as Ars Technica, who frequently receive insider leaks from reputable sources, have received no information either. This is pretty much as good as an official FAA announcement that the review is going to be delayed another month. But of course, I really hope that they do surprise us with full approval. But honestly, a Boca Chica orbital launch in 2022 is looking less and less likely. Which leads us to a burning question. Will SpaceX ditch the Texas launch and aim to make the first Starship orbital flight from the Space Coast in Florida? What do you think? 
Starbase or the Kennedy Space Center? Let me know your thoughts down below. And as always, if you're enjoying the content today, then do be sure to leave a like down below and hit subscribe. I always do appreciate it. Anyway, while it may be curtains for Booster 7, so far Ship 24 still seems to be on track as the likely candidate for the first orbital flight test, as we caught SpaceX transporting some vacuum Raptor thrust rams to the launch site, meaning that hopefully it won't be too long now for Ship 24 to finally make its debut. Now, last week we saw a Falcon 9 launch on the 21st of April. This was the only launch of the week. We certainly hoped we might be seeing the debut of Rocket Lab's shiny silver electron rocket, the first ever electron that Rocket Lab planned to recover while it's descending down to Earth using a helicopter. Wild, am I right? But sadly, this launch is now more likely to be taking place this week, probably on the 27th of April. I talked about this amazing mission a lot in last week's episode, so check that out if you want to hear more about this mission. Otherwise, I'll just press on to the topic I opened this little paragraph with, last week's Falcon 9 launch. This was mission Starlink Group 414, and it was the 12th launch to Starlink Shell 4. It was also, coincidentally, the 12th launch for this particular Falcon 9 first stage. Booster 1060 has supported numerous Starlink missions before, as well as a few other launches for various clients, all of which are outlined here in this excellent infographic once again provided to us by the talented Rooklam. The video feed of the landing of this booster was very, very clean and very viewable. <laughs> this should hopefully now be the standard level of quality that we get now, as Elon confirmed that Starlink dishes have been bolted to the deck of the drone ships now, which are able to handle high vibrations and acoustics, things that are, of course, associated with massive rockets landing themselves. In addition to the booster, SpaceX also successfully recovered the fairing halves for this mission, using the recovery ship Bob. <laughs> Man, SpaceX never failed to deliver on their vessel naming. I, for one, am very much looking forward to the Starship launch, where Super Heavy Ian launches Starship Jeffrey to Mars. And it goes without saying that the Starlink satellites here were all successfully deployed to low Earth orbit orbit, boosting the total number of Starlink satellites launched to 2,388, of which 2,156 are still in orbit. And with regard to SpaceX's target of 60 orbital launches in 2022, this mission puts them at just past the 30% mark. Go SpaceX! Now for some news from the Chinese space station. The Chinese space agency undocked the Tianzhou-3 cargo spacecraft from the backward port of the currently uncrewed space station on Tuesday and redocked it to the forward docking port on Wednesday. This is to create room for the upcoming Tianzhou-4 space station construction mission. China have big plans to expand their space station over the course of the next year, which will be a very exciting thing to watch develop. Now it's time for some news from Mars. NASA's Perseverance rover used its Mastcam Z camera to capture this amazing video of Phobos, one of the two Martian moons, eclipse the sun. This is, to date, the best quality footage we've ever seen of a solar eclipse captured from the surface of another planet, and to be honest, this fact alone brings me chills. This is incredible to watch, really, when you think about it. An interesting fact about Phobos is that it's long been known to be steadily drifting towards the Martian surface, and in tens of millions of years from now, it's expected to crash into the red planet. I wonder if future generations of humans who have colonized the surface of Mars, perhaps even realizing SpaceX's ambition of a full-on Martian city, will need to actively try and plan to stop this. Should they nuke it? Or maybe they'll apply some wonder technology that we plebeians of today could only dream of. Who knows, but it's interesting to think about this in the context of humans colonizing Mars. And that is why I love covering space news content. We're really living in the golden age of spaceflight and technology, and we're first-hand witnessing the birth of the holy grail of rockets. If Starship manages to do what SpaceX wants it to, it will totally revolutionize everything. I said, this will totally revolutionize everything. Please appreciate this and let SpaceX do this. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. I do love SLS as well, though. Love it, genuinely. Oh, now I sound really disingenuous. Oh, whatever. My love doesn't just extend to SLS. It also extends to you. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Space This Week. And an especially big thank you to all my generous Patreon supporters and channel members. Names on screen as always. These videos cost time and money to make, what with royalty payments and such. So it's your generosity that makes this content possible. Join my Patreon or channel membership scheme through the links below or on screen if you want to be part of the squad. And hey, there's two video suggestions on screen as well. Check them out if they look interesting. I'll see you next Saturday for my next Kerbal video, which will be a fairly everyday rescue mission. Winky face. I wrote winky face on the script.